right. Good morning to everyone. Good morning. Amen. Can we start by giving the Lord a hand clap of praise? Amen. It is good to be in the house of the Lord. And as we always say, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. The songwriter said, and I still say that I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. We come with one agenda, and that is to uplift our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is the great I am. He is the one who was, the one who is, and the one who is to come. He is our way maker. He is our burden bearer. Everything that we need resides in him. In John, the Bible says, apart from him, we can do nothing. I don't know about you, but I'm just glad to be his child. Amen. Amen. Uh, because being a child of God comes with so many different benefits. And um, I'm just glad to be a partaker of those benefits that comes with uh, being a child of God. Um, it's a beautiful day uh, to serve. It's a beautiful day to uplift him. And it's definitely a good day to hear um, a word from him. People are going through uh, a lot of different dilemmas, a lot of different circumstances. Uh, people are trying to adapt to living without certain individuals in their lives. Uh, people are leaving this earth swiftly. Uh, so the Bible tells us we don't know the day or the hour. And so we must always be ready to transition out of this place. Uh, we're praying for those who are sick, homebound. We're praying for those, um, we're praying for Sister Ardelia. She's had um, a surgery, major surgery. Uh, I prayed with the family the other day, uh, so just continue to keep them lifted. Uh, we have um, people who have lost loved ones. Uh, I think, I can't think of a name. Uh, pray for one named Tatanya. Pray for her strength. Uh, she lost her husband some weeks ago, and, um, and she's still struggling, of course. You know, um, it's just difficult for a lot of people. Uh, we don't understand death in its totality, so... It's a struggle for so many people. Also, um, just pray for our city. You know, there's a lot going on in Chattanooga. Mm -hmm. and we're praying for the world, but we need to pray for our own Jerusalem. And that is the place where we reside, uh, where we rub shoulders, the people that we deal with, our workplace. Uh, just ask God to be a fence all around you every day. Uh, because people will pull stuff out of you. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Amen. We can't, we can't blame them, you know, or point the finger at them if they really show us what we struggle with the most. Yeah. Amen. You know, and we all are struggling with something. And sometimes it's our attitude, our disposition. Sometimes people rub us the wrong way. You know, it's just so many different things that we struggle with. We struggle with uh, God's intervention. Sometimes God intervened in our lives in a way that we don't like it. You know, we pray, Lord, step into this and fix it. And sometimes you don't have to pray that in order for God to do it. Amen. He'll step yeah. into a situation and he'll fix it. And you don't even see anything wrong with it. Mm -hmm. mm, thank you, Lord. <laughs> that's, that's the type of God that we serve. He always has our best interest at heart. Like the song just said, even when I can't see. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, just be discerning and ask God to give you the wisdom to know when he is moving, when he is restructuring and repositioning you and the people who's a part of your life. Some people who are walking with you right now won't be walking with you months from here. Amen. And you don't even, you don't, you don't understand and you don't see what's going on, but God, his all seeing eye is always on you. Because he loves you so much and it is his desire and will to protect you from danger seen and unseen. And so today I want to talk a little bit about dilemmas. Mm. Dilemmas. Y'all say it with me. Say dilemmas. 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 Amen. But let us pray first. Father, we come to you today saying thank you. You have been better to us than we truly deserve. We love you not just because of what you've done for us. We love you just for who you are. We lift you up today because we know that if you be lifted from this earth, that you will draw all men unto you. 
You are still drawing people. You are still saving people. The Bible says that the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. We have a lot of lost people, God, so we know that you are doing a lot of drawing. I pray that you would use your believers, your people, to show people the way, the truth, and the life. I pray that you would continue to equip us to be all that you've called us to be. We come today uh, humbly as we know how, asking for forgiveness of sin because we know that all of us have sinned and we've come short of the glory of God. Your word says, if we confess our sins, that you are faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Create within us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. We pray for those who don't know you. We ask that you would draw them. We ask that you would get their attention. We ask that you would protect them uh, just like you protected us when we didn't know you. God, we know that our hearts are deceitful and desperately wicked. The Bible says, who can know it? Nobody knows us like you know us. Nobody knows what's in us like you do, God. And you have the antidote. You have the remedy. You have the fix that we need, God, to push us and to propel us to be the people you called us to be. None of us are perfect, but we are definitely people who are striving for perfection. We are being perfected by you right now through your word, because the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So our faith increases when we hear you speak. Our faith increases when we read your word. Our faith goes to another level, God, when we are intimately acquainted with you. So we ask that you would uh, decrease us and increase yourself. We want to be more like you. We want to be better stewards of the things that you've given us, Lord, so that we can please you. Uh, have your way today, and we'll be careful to give you all the honor, the praise, and the glory. We pray for those who are streaming live, who are listening from home. We pray, God, that you would touch them where they are. We pray that you would give them the strength that they need. I pray that you would just surround them, God, with your glory, with your presence, that your anointing, God, will lead and guide them into all truth. We pray, Lord, that you would lift us up, God, that, that you would take us to levels that we've never experienced before, that we would bask in your glory, that we would be God, God chasers, Lord, that we would just open our hearts, that you may use us the way you see fit. And we'll be careful to give you all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Somebody say amen and, and put your phone down just for a moment and we're going to give God a big hand clap of praise. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes to your will and yes to your ways. This morning we want to talk about dilemmas. Turn your Bibles with me to Exodus chapter 14 and we're going to read verses 13 and 14. Exodus chapter 14 Verses 13 and 14. Yes, Lord. Speak to us about these dilemmas. Amen. Anybody had any dilemmas lately? Amen. Amen. God came to speak to our dilemmas. Exodus chapter 14, verses 13 and 14. You can call it dilemmas or you can call it a rock in a hard place. <laughs> they both mean the same. Amen. When you get there, say amen. amen. If you need more time, say hold on, pastor. Hold on, pastor. Amen. We gotta, we're waiting on a few. <laughs> amen. We're waiting on a few. And it's all right. We'll wait. Exodus is right in the beginning, right after Genesis. It's okay. We are here to grow together. I love this group of people. Amen. I love who God has sent. I'm grateful for each and every one of you, the gifts that God has given you and what you bring to the table. Amen. I'm, I'm proud of a lot of you. Uh, your spiritual growth and how you're striving to be everything that God has called you to be. Don't ever stop the fight. Amen. Amen. You got to keep on fighting to grow Amen. because the enemy is always trying to stunt our growth mm -hmm. because he wants us to become stagnant. Mm -hmm. We don't have time to be stagnant 
because we have a destination that we're trying to arrive to. We have places to be. And God is trying to put us in position. Mm -hmm. He's trying to position us to get to the next level. It would be a sad thing for God to open a door that we're ill prepared to walk through. Amen. The very thing that you've been praying and asking God to do for you, and God says, I'm ready to do it, but you're not ready for it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And so as you pray and ask God to do things for you, make sure that you're paying very close attention to what he's doing to equip you for where he's taking you. Yeah. See, because God is light years ahead of us. He's so far ahead of us. And so he always go before us. Remember when God was going with Israel by day, uh, fire by night and cloud by day? He was always going before them to prepare the way. And he was always going behind them to push them to the next level. So God is not only in front of you, but he's yeah. also behind you. Let me say it this way. David says, yea, he says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not, not want. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will feel no evil for God is with me. God was with David through his wilderness experience. And that's why he could walk through the valley. And see, you don't, uh, when we in our, are in the valley experience, you know what we try to do? We try to run through it. Uh -huh. <laughs> I want to get it over. Just be honest. When I'm in the valley, I don't want to stay here. I don't want to stay in this. You know, some super spiritual people will tell you, oh, just deal with it. Just go through it. Well, sometimes I don't want to deal with it. Amen. You know, right. I, I want to get out of it. Right. But when God is with you, just like David, you walk through it. Because there are some things that God needs you to see. There are some things he needs you to experience. And so he won't allow you to run through it. Because until the lesson is learned, you stay in the valley longer. I want to get out the valley. That means I need to walk through it and get the full experience. Because if I get the full experience, I don't want it twice. Right? I don't want to keep going through the same thing, repeating the same cycle over and over again. Jesus had to work some miracles more than once. The same miracle because they never got it the first time. You know, and I don't want to be in such a dilemma that I have to go through that God has to work a miracle to get me out of it. Yeah. And sometimes we pray, Lord, work a miracle for me. Do you know what it takes for a miracle to be performed? A problem. Yeah. <laughs> it does. I don't, I don't want a miracle if I don't need it. <laughs> right? Because if you want a miracle, that means that there has to be a need for one. Right? That people can't get you out of. Only God can get you out of it. And so, Lord, I would just rather, I don't want the miracle unless I really need it. But I ain't just praying for one every day. Because I don't want a problem every day. Right? So, today we're going to talk about dilemmas. Um, Turn with me, Exodus 14, verses 13 and 14. We're going to take those couple of verses and we'll uh, kind of get a little meat off these bones here. Okay? The word of God says, but Moses said to the people, do not fear. Stand by and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. Somebody say today. today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today. You will never see, again, see them again forever. The Lord will fight for you while you be quiet. <laughs> woo! Somebody going to say woo! Because it's hard to be quiet. Because I definitely don't want them to think that I'm a sucker. And that they're playing me. And so if they speak it, sometimes I got to speak back. Ooh, but sometimes the Bible says you got to close your mouth. And let God fight your battle. And that's difficult to do. But once again, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. He asked you to feed your enemies. How many, when was the last time you fed an enemy? Uh-huh. 
Because I, I ain't trying to feed my enemy. And I can't feed my enemy in the natural. That's a supernatural thing that only God can equip you to do. Right? But I can do it through him. Pray for those who despitefully use you. These folk dogging you, talking about you, doing all these things that the Bible says. Pray for them. No, Lord, but you answer my prayers. And if I pray for them, that means you're going to help them. But they're hurting me. Come on, y'all. Y'all know that sometimes this stuff, this journey is a difficult journey. So we're going to talk about dilemmas. Let's, let's break down what a dilemma is. Once again, a dilemma can also be considered a rock in a hard place. Okay? The children of Israel were coming out of Egypt. God had told Moses to tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Mm -hmm. But God had hardened his heart so that he wouldn't let him go. God had actually turned Pharaoh over to his own devices and to his own heart. Uh, sometimes, if you know, it's a very dangerous thing if God lets you be who you really are. It's easy to come in here on a Sunday morning and praise the Lord. You know, Jesus is real and we can sing our songs and, yeah. and all that. Get the word and say amen and thank you, Jesus. I'm, not, I'm talking about we can get into it on a Sunday morning. Yeah. Amen. And I, we know the lingo. We know how to talk, how to maneuver. But even as good as you maneuver, if God turned you over... Mm -hmm. To the real person that resides inside of you. Come on, all of us will be a mess. Oh, y'all don't want to get honest this morning. I said all of us would be a mess. Because sometimes I don't think like I ought to be thinking. I, I don't think like a child of God. Sometimes, you know, I you know, my thoughts get the best of me. I know y'all sanctified and I know y'all don't have that problem, but sometimes if we get honest, our minds take over. And then you have to even check yourself and be like, man, I'm tripping. You know, Lord, I need you to come in and cleanse my thoughts and give me the thoughts of God. Help me in this journey. And so sometimes God will turn people over to who they are and allow them to be who they are. Because um, just like Judas, God turned him over. To be who he was. And because he allowed him to be the Judas that he was. He actually pushed Jesus to his destiny. Because Jesus wouldn't have actually made it to the cross. Without Judas playing his role. So sometimes you will have people in your life. Who play a role that you don't like. And you want to change the script so bad. But you didn't write it. You, you, you know, when you watch a movie, you wish certain people had certain roles in the movie. Why did they let him play that role? Why didn't they let him? You didn't write the script. And so since God writes the, the script to our lives, he allows people to be who they are. And he, you just sometimes got to let people play their role. Some of the hurt and the pain that you've been through in the past, you can, you, you, now when you look back, you can actually high five the person who helped you to get to where you are today. In that moment, you didn't understand it because it was so painful. It was so uncomfortable. But now when you look back, you'll be like, man, thank you. Now, I wouldn't be the person I am today if it wasn't for what we went through. And so I ain't mad at you no more. Actually, I'm proud of you because you had to play your role. Some of the people that we want to get rid of the most have some of the most important parts in our lives. But what is a rock and a hard place? What is a dilemma? We got to break this stuff down because I'm getting too excited too quick. <laughs> so I, I got to break this down so that we can get some understanding so that we can leave here with some knowledge. Okay. A dilemma is an adage used to refer or a rock and a hard place is, is an adage, adage that is used to refer to a dilemma, a situation uh, offering at least two possibilities. Okay? If you got a dilemma, you have possibilities. Uh, but the problem is that neither of the possibilities are acceptable. Which, no, so it doesn't matter which option you choose. 
Neither option seems to be a good option. Think about the children of Israel. They're coming out of Egypt. Okay, Pharaoh let them go. And now Pharaoh is chasing them. The army is chasing them. Pharaoh changed his mind. So he's trying to overtake the children of Israel. And if he catch, catches them, you know what he does? He's, he, what he's going to do, he's going to kill them. Okay, so you have a Red Sea in front of them. Mm -hmm. Okay, they're trapped. You got an army running behind you. And you got a whole sea in front of you. If I go forward, then we drown in the sea. Right? right. But if I go backwards, then Pharaoh... And his army is there to destroy us, right? Mm -hmm. So that's called a dilemma or a rock in a hard place. In the Urban Dictionary, it is a tight spot or a suffocating situation. Have any of you ever had a suffocating situation? Yeah. You had something going on in your life and it just seems to be smothering you? Seems to be choking the life out of you? You can't live the way you know you need to live because you got this situation before you. It's suffocating. It's a tight spot. Or it also means having an impossible decision. It means a lose-lose situation. And there are a lot of people in this world who feel like they have no option. If I go this way, I'm going to lose. If I go that way, I'm going to lose. And they're just stuck like a rock in a hard place. Another term that we could use is trapped. Have you ever been trapped? Yeah. You know, and a person who is trapped, they're waiting on somebody else to save them. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's, it's a sad thing to be in a situation or a relationship. And you feel like you're trapped in the relationship. You don't want to be here, but if I leave, man, I'm going to drown. If I stay, I'm still going to drown. You trapped, baby. Mm -hmm. you, you need some help. Amen. And sometimes your only help is to look to the hills from which comes your help. Yeah. Because your help truly comes from the Lord. There are some times and some circumstances where people can't help you. And I believe that those are situations that God, through his permissive will, allows to happen. Okay? Because we always run to certain people for help. Uh -huh. Sometimes God says, I'm tired of you running to people. All right. Because when you run to people, you feel like you don't have an obligation to pray. Uh -huh. Because you already know if you go to them, they're going to help you. But you're skipping way over me and not giving me an opportunity to work through your circumstance and to teach you how to navigate through it. You're leaning and depending on other people and you're, you're looking over me and I'm right here ready to do this thing for you. Yeah. A rock in a hard place is an opportunity for God to show his power and to put it on display. Okay, so let me tell you something about dilemmas. I want to I want to tell you how they impact your life. Dilemmas causes us to become fearful at times. Yeah. When I'm in a dilemma, yeah. I'm fearful yeah. because nobody likes failure. Right. Okay, and when we know or feel like we're about to fail in something, we become fearful because we are always concerned about how other people view us. We, we allow people and their opinions to control us. And so we become terrified if a relationship is about to fail. Some people will stick a relationship out even if it's killing them. Because they don't want people to, to look at them and say, see? But you're going to always have people who are speaking death to the things that are living in your life. You get married. Oh, it won't last for five years. You, you eight years in and still going strong. But there are some people who are miserable in those relationships. And they're going to stick it out. Man, boom, getting hit upside the head. I'm, I'm going to stick it out. Woo, I'm going to stick it out. Jesus, help me. He said, I'm helping you. You see that sign right there that says exit? <laughs> you see, that it, it's lit up and now it's flashing. <laughs> It's an accident, but you want to stay. Why? Because the people are, are going to say that I failed in the relationship. Listen, I don't care if I failed five times. I'm not staying in a situation that's killing me. And I don't care what they say. They ain't paying no bills. They ain't gave me nothing on nothing. Amen. So your opinion ain't that powerful or that strong. When you learn 
how to divorce people's opinions about your life and you live on purpose, in purpose, then you know what? Let them say what they want to say. Guess what? I'm happy. Hey, turn to your neighbor and say, I'm happy. Okay. Amen. That's all that matters. Who cares? If you meet somebody, you want to get married two months from now, guess what? Do it. Amen. They're going to say, man, they ain't even know each other now. You don't know what we know about each other. Amen. That's your problem, and that's why you don't understand our relationship. It ain't meant for you to understand it. Man, y'all better get real. Some of y'all missing out on life because you're too in tuned with others, other people's perspective of your life. They don't even like you. So why do, why do you even care about their opinion? Come on, Pastor. That's why I, I be smiling. I be walking through like smiling. Man, look at him. He think he this. He think he that. Man, I'm, I'm happy. I'm smiling. I'm, I'm chilling. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'm chilling. Pastor, do the, if people speak on your name or whatever, does it bother? No, it doesn't bother me. What will bother me more than anything is if my family, the people who's going to love me when I'm up or down, now when they start talking, I'm all ears like, what's up? Do we need to have a family meeting? Do we need to sit down? Y'all need to check me? Somebody need to get checked? That's what matters. Why? Because you know family's going to beat you up, you up, you down. Your family's going to be there. You don't have to have a dime. I'm talking about you can fall. They're going to be there to pick you up. Those are relationships that matter. I used to think being a pastor that you just have to cater to the church and you got to cater to the people that come to your church. But what I learned is that uh, people come and people go. And guess what? You still gonna, you still got to come to that family function. Uh -huh. yeah. And you don't want to mess up what you have going on with your family trying to cater to people that only like you for a season. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Dilemma that call, calls us to be fearful at times, but God has not given us a spirit of fear. Secondly, that calls us to look for relief. They cause us to look for relief. And as I said before, sometimes your close circle can't assist you. Uh -huh. Dilemmas remind us that we are not God and cannot deliver ourselves. You need deliverance. Why, why would you need God if you could do it all? You know, some people have a God complex. They have a God complex. You let them tell it, they don't have no troubles, no issues. Everything is always fine. Yes, how they're doing perfect. They always, that's, it's cliche. -ic. They have learned how to make people think that everything is okay when everything is not. You don't get help until you admit you need it. Amen. Sometimes everything is not okay. That's right. But you can't tell everybody that. Amen. Amen. You need to let some people believe it's okay. Yeah. Amen. Especially those number one gossipers in your city. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You don't want to let them know nothing. Yeah. And just avoid them at all costs. Yes. Amen. Don't even have a conversation with them. You, you, listen, it ain't worth it. Because they're going to take what you say and they're going to twist it in your... Yeah, y'all know how that goes. Yeah. Avoid what you can, but understand this. You're not the only person in this world with an issue. Your issue reminds you of how much you need God. And sometimes sin reminds you of it too. Because as much as we want to be right with God and for God, and we want to live a sanctified life, when sin creeps in, sometimes it'll get you down. Because you want to get it right so bad. And you've already asked God for forgiveness for that thing that you keep failing in. And you find yourself doing it again. And you, you kind of get down on yourself. But understand this. God knows what you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. And watch this. The Bible says, in your weakness, my strength is perfected. In your weakness, God... His strength is perfected in your life. That means that if you don't have a weakness, 
How can God's strength be perfected? That's when he shows up. That's when you understand that I can't do this on my own. You go to the right church, they're going to have you coming up to the front. <laughs> and they're going to have you <clears throat> putting your business on the line. You got anything going on in your life? You have you seen this week? Yeah. Yeah. We need you to come up here and confess. Mm -hmm. Right? That's what they do. But the, the only issue with that is that there's not enough room in that space you're calling people to for the whole church. Right. Because if you call one person up, you got to call Y'all remember the woman we talked about her last last week? Yeah. Caught in sin. Ooh, by the religious leaders. Girl, come on up here. Get in this circle. Now, Jesus, this woman just sinned. We caught her. And we want to see how you're going to handle her. And Jesus said, now I'm going to let y'all do this. What, what y'all suggest? Well, you know, if a person is caught in adultery... Uh, the penalty, according to the Old Testament, is that you're supposed to stone such individuals. Okay? They're being righteous judges right now. So they think. Okay? So in a church setting, what we do is we bring the people to the front, turn them toward the congregation in total humiliation, and say, uh, tell the church what you just did. And you got all these super spiritual sinners sitting in the seat, eager to listen to and to know what you just did. Woo, they know what they're going to talk about when they go out to lunch, dinner tonight. You. You have been put in a position to expose your business to people who just want to hear the business. Mm -hmm. yeah. When the Bible, the same Bible, says love covers a multitude of sin. Y'all with me? Yeah. Not a sin, but love covers a multitude. Do you know what a multitude is? Wow. You got to have people in your life who's going to pick you up when you fall. Not expose you. Covering and exposure diametrically opposes each other. Covering covers you. Look, I'm, because I cover you don't mean I ain't going to check you. Because I cover you don't mean we ain't going to have a cover conversation. Because I cover you don't mean you won't be held accountable. We're going to hold you accountable, but at the same time, we're not trying to expose you mm -hmm. so that the enemy can run away with your life. Mm -hmm. But that woman who was judged unrighteously by those religious people, Jesus says, okay, I'm going to put her in your hands. Do what you want to do. You without sin, y'all cast the first stone. Nobody could cast a stone. And the Bible says that they started walking away from the oldest to the youngest. Uh -huh. Right? Right? So watch this. Think about this. From the oldest to the youngest. Those older leaders were showing the younger people how to do it their way. Yeah. Right? And so when Jesus checked those old fools, huh. right? The ones who were young were like, something right here. So we got some questions to ask. All of them had sin in them. Because you're born into sin. Yes. Dilemmas. Dilemmas. They remind us that we are not God and that we cannot deliver ourselves. And that is a reality check. Amen. Amen. I, listen, there is nobody in this world, I don't care, no bishop, no pastor, no, I don't care what they are. You now, you're not going to look down on nobody. Amen. Me and nobody else, buddy. Because we know the nature of man. Amen. Come on now. Yeah. You just got to be honest with yourself. Mm -hmm. There can be no miracle without a mess first. Mm -hmm. This is why 
I don't pray for a miracle unless I'm in a mess. Yeah. Right? If you're not in a mess, if you're not in a dilemma, don't pray for a miracle. Because if you're asking God for a miracle and there's no mess, you're asking for a mess in order for the miracle to take place. And so I don't want a miracle, Lord, if I don't need it. Amen. Amen. So let's look at, a, uh, let's pick the verse for a minute. A few things you need to know about God. Uh, look in verse 17 and 18 in Exodus chapter 13. Verse 17 says, now when Pharaoh had let the people go, God did not lead them by the way of the land of the Philistines, even though it was near. For God said, the people might change their minds when they see war and return to Egypt. Okay, so God is trying to lead the children of Israel out, but he led them away from the enemy mm -hmm. because he felt like if they ran into the enemy, they would just submit and go back into bondage. God always wants to bring us out of bondage. Yeah. And I want you to also notice uh, this first point here. God never leaves the scene when it involves his children. Because if you look at verse 17, it is God who is leading them. And so you can be in a situation that you don't like and it can still be of God. Don't think that God only leads you to places where it's going to be fun. He's not going to just lead you. No, sometimes he's going to take you uh, through the wilderness. David even said, yea, though I, you know. The Lord is my shepherd, and, and he led him through the wilderness. So there will be times that you'll go through it, but just know that God is still on the scene. Yes. Psalm 46, 1 says this, God is our refuge and strength and, and ever-present help in time of trouble. Okay? So anytime there's trouble, your help is always there. Amen. Even if people don't show up, God never left the scene. But we don't acknowledge him because we'd be so enamored by the circumstance. When Peter was sinking, it's because he took his eyes off Jesus. He took his eyes off Jesus and he started sinking. But Jesus was in such close proximity that uh, when Peter started sinking, he had sense enough to say, Lord, help me. Yes. Some, some people won't do it. You know what to stop them? Pride. You need help, you just need help. Amen. I've had to ask for help before. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm not going to ask any and everybody for it. You got to be somebody that I know God put in my life. Amen. Amen. You know, that's why you got to have people. Amen. Yes. You got to have the right people in your corner. No person is an island by themselves. Mm -hmm. And so God never leaves the scene. Know that. Please make a mental note of that. God never leaves the scene. Secondly, God, God's desire is always to see his people free from four things. Sin, slavery, Satan, and self. Okay? I'm going to give them to you again. So you, you, you listen. <laughs> Let me say it this way. These are the four areas that God works in the most. When it comes to your life, he's trying to free you from sin, slavery, Satan, fourthly, yourself. Because sometimes you, <laughs> come on, I need the church to say amen. Oh, y'all say that real low. Amen. So sometimes I'm my biggest yes, yes. problem. Lord, deliver me yes. from me. You know how God delivers you from you? By saying, follow me. When God called his disciples, all of them had different occupations. Some of them were tax collectors. Some of them... Uh, were fishermen, some of them were doing some of everything. I mean, um, when Jesus called them, he would say, follow me. 
And when they followed Jesus, he would deliver them from their old occupation. And so if you ever want to be delivered from you, you have to be sensitive to what God is saying to you in this season. Okay, so those are the four S's. Uh, sin, slavery, Satan, and self. And thirdly, God will use everything mentioned above to push you to sanctification. Sanctification is very important. Sanctification uh, pretty much means to be made holy, to be purified. It, it means to be on one accord with God, to be set apart. Okay? We not, we're not supposed to be looking like the world, you know, especially doing everything that they do. You know, and I'm not saying you can't go out and have fun and you got to be stuck in the house with a Bible in your lap all day long. Nobody lives like that. That ain't a reality for folk. Anybody living like that, they, I mean, you just sitting back waiting on heaven. You might as well just go, you know. <laughs> My God, you got to live. You have to live. God called you to live. Now, you play some music, I'm going to dance. I'm just going to tell you right now, I, I, look, I can't dance a lick, I don't think. But you know what? I'm going to move. I'm going to move. Yeah. I'm not just, and, and listen, can I just keep it real with y'all? Can I keep it real with y'all? Y'all let me know, can I? Amen. I don't sit around and listen to gospel every day. No. When I'm on my bass guitar, I ain't always playing gospel. I, I like soul music, well, you yeah, know. Yeah. 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 I listen to gospel, but I listen to R&B. I listen. I don't work out to gospel. No. And when I'm in the gym, I, I'm in killer mode. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Pushing. So, listen, live. Yes. Live. People, Lord. My fourth point is this. God will lead you to blind and dry spots and watch your reaction when you are in the moment. God is watching how you handle life. He watching you. Because I've known people to be prayer warriors and intercessors until it's time for them to go through it. You're a prayer warrior, you're an intercessor, you told everybody God gonna work it out. Yeah. And something simple is unfolding in your life and you can't handle it. Yeah. It's not about what you say. Amen. This journey is a real journey. This is nothing to play with. This is why I try to encourage everybody to learn about the sovereignty of God. Yes. It changes your whole life. It changes how you view God and how you view circumstances. If you believe that God is sovereign, meaning that God is on the throne and everything that happens in your life is monitored mm -hmm. by God, if he allows it in, it's because he permitted it. Okay. If he doesn't allow it in, it's because he stopped it. If you can sit back and say, God, whatever your will is for my life, I'll accept it. Yes. Then I promise you that life will be so much sweeter. Amen. Life will be so much sweeter. Sometimes, you know, when people get sick, you can pray for them. But just because you pray don't mean they're going to be healed. Amen. That's right. Oh, yeah. I just had to drop the truth on y'all. Because some people... Uh, say, well, we've been praying, we've been praying that God didn't do it. God didn't do it because it wasn't his will. Right. But you still had a responsibility to pray without yes. ceasing. Yes. Sometimes God going to say no. Mm -hmm. And you're going to set up your best prayers and he's still going to say no. Yeah. He did it for Paul when he had them thorns in his flesh, meaning that he had something going on in his body. He had something going on and he prayed. He said, I prayed three times that God will remove this thing from my life. And you know what God's response to, to his prayer was? My grace is sufficient. In other words, he said, I ain't moving it. I, I, I'm not moving the thorn out of your flesh. But, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you the grace to live with it. Woo, that, that's amazing in itself. 
I just want to pause for a moment. Give God praise for giving you grace to live with the things that he ain't changing. Amen. He says, I'm going to give you the grace to live with the things that I don't want to change. We're not going to keep having this conversation. You say you love me, you trust me, then accept my will. When Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he prayed and he prayed. And I think he prayed about three or four times that God would remove the bitter cup. He, he didn't want to drink it. It wasn't a literal cup, but the bitter cup was him going through all the agony and the pain to go to the cross. And he prayed, Lord, he said, Father, please, if it's possible at all, find another way. Right. For me to save your people. Mm -hmm. I don't want to drink this bitter cup. Mm -hmm. And some people try to make it seem like, oh, Jesus wanted to die for the people. Oh, he no. wanted to. Let me let me help you out just for a moment. <laughs> Jesus did not want to get on that cross and hang for you and me. Yes. Do you hear me? Go back and read your Bible and you will see where he petitioned the father in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he asked multiple times if that was a different way. He didn't want to do it that way. Sometimes God's going to ask you to do things, you don't want to do it that way. Mm -hmm. But if you are truly following him, you have to be able to say, but nevertheless, mm -hmm. if God says, there's no other way that I want you to do this, you have to be able to say, but nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. And so the question that I want to ask you is, can you do God's will when it hurts you? Because God still does his will when you hurt him. Because sometimes we do hurt him. We do things that hurt God. We ignore him in front of certain people. We downplay him in front of the right folks show up. We'll never have a God conversation. He says, uh, if you be ashamed of me before people, I'll be ashamed of you before my father. Right. And I can't I can't get up there on the day of judgment and my lawyer acting like he don't know me. Go to court without your lawyer and you know you're guilty. Come on. You know you're guilty. The jurors and the judge is going to find you guilty unless you got a good lawyer. You get a mouthpiece, you got a good lawyer that stands before the judge and proves you innocent. Because I'm taking their place. I paid that's what Jesus is to us. Yes. Even though you're guilty. Come on, y'all. Yes. You probably was guilty yesterday. Might have been guilty this morning before you walked in here. But you have to, at some point, acknowledge and tell the Father, thank you for giving your son to pay the penalty for the junk that I keep doing. Let me bring this thing in. God hardened Pharaoh's heart. When Pharaoh let the people go, God hardened his heart for him to change his mind. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't have been a dilemma if Pharaoh and his army wasn't chasing the children of Israel. It became a dilemma when God hardened his heart and he went after them to capture them and to kill them. Okay? What makes it a dilemma is that was a red sea in front of What are you going to do when you got a dilemma in your life? Right. When you got Pharaoh behind you chasing you and you got a red sea in front of you. Either you're going to die, become a slave, or you're getting ready to drown in this red sea. What are you going to do? In a situation like that, all you can do is pray. You look back, you messed up. You go forward, you messed up. You stand still. You messed up. Mm -hmm. Unless God is standing with you. 
And I need you all to know that when you have a dilemma, it's something that you can't fix. God is still on the scene. Yes. And God orchestrated all of that. He hardened Pharaoh's heart. Listen, good, bad, ugly, God controls the heart. Yes. If God wants to make a bad person do something good for you, he can do it. Amen. Because he controls the heart. And so, in verse 18, his God led the people around by the sons of Israel. They went up in martial array from the land of Egypt. Verse 19, Moses took the bones of Joseph with him, for he had made the sons of Israel solemnly swear, uh, God will surely take care of you, and you shall carry my bones from here with you. Verse 20, then they set out from Sukkoth, and camped in Etham on the edge of the wilderness. In verse 21, the Lord was going before them in the pillar of cloud by day. That's the Old Testament's way. To lead them on the way. And in the pillar of fire by night to give them light. That they might travel by day and night. He did not take away the pillar of cloud by day nor the pillar of fire by night from before them. <clears throat> and I want to jump over just a little bit. Ver look at verse 8 in chapter 14. The Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and he chased after the sons of Israel as the sons of Israel were going out boldly. Listen to this. Anytime God is delivering you from something, that's where the enemy turns up the heat. Anytime you are getting free from something that had you in bondage, all hell is going to break loose. Whether you're leaving a bad relationship, whether you're leaving a bad job, whatever it is that was bad, whether you're leaving bondage, sin, whatever it is, when you are coming out is when the enemy turns up the heat. And the reason he turns up the heat is because as long as you were in bondage, he had power over you. But when you're leaving out, the enemy is fighting to keep you where he had you. And so I need you to understand that in this walk, you have to put up a fight. You have to fight for your freedom. But anytime you are in a dilemma, just know that God will make a way out of no way for you. What did he do for the children of Israel? Moses had the staff in his hand. Mm -hmm. God parted the sea so that the children of Israel could walk over on dry land. Now, some people might find it hard to believe that God can push the waters and part the waters. But listen, have you ever seen the wind really tell up some stuff? Yeah. 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 Do you not remember a few years ago when the wind... When all that stuff happened in Florida, when people were trying to get up out of there, mm -hmm. all those strong winds and the water rising up. Be, listen. Mm -hmm. There's nothing too hard for God. Amen. I've seen what wind can do. Wind can be gentle on your face on the beach. You can be sitting there in a cool breeze, but that same wind yeah. can flip you. I was coming from downtown the other day when the wind was blowing hard. This old lady was crossing the street. Lord have mercy. I'm talking about, she, I, I thought she was getting ready to blow into traffic. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. And so it was nothing for God to blow on the Red Sea, cause it to part and allow his children to walk over. And when the enemy tried to do the same thing, he allowed this, the water to close in over him. All I'm saying to you is that when a miracle is needed, God is always ready to work with. You're never stuck in a dilemma, although you might be in one. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. You might be in it, but you're not stuck. Why? Because God is still on the throne. And somebody needs to know that. Somebody's at home and you're in a dilemma. And you don't know how you're going to get out of it. Somebody might be in here dealing with a dilemma. Just be still and know that he is God. Sometimes you just have to stop. And say, Lord, whatever you want to do, I'm open for it. Mm -hmm. Open your heart. Stop trying to play God and let God be who he is in your life. Mm -hmm. And I promise you, 
he will bring you out. That's the message that people need to know. A dilemma doesn't mean that your life is over. A dilemma means that God is on his way. A dilemma means that God is about to show up. A dilemma means that God is about to show out. Because when you're in a dilemma, sometimes people know you're in it. But when they see you come out, not smelling like smoke, all right, all right. no bruises, no burns, they'll know that nobody could have done it but God. And so whatever you're dealing with right now, just know, weeping may endure for a night, but joy is going to come in the morning. It's just a dilemma. And although it might be something to you, it's nothing to the God that we serve. We were in a dilemma before Jesus went up on that cross. We were living in sin and was going to die in it. But when Jesus went up that hill called Golgotha, laid down his life, gave his life as a ransom for many. He took care, once again, of the, of the dilemma. When he got up, guess what? We got up too. Before, there was no way to bridge the gap between us and God because we were born in sin. God can't look up on it. Jesus took our place. He was sinless, yet he died for sinners. And because he did that, he pulled us out of the dilemma. Amen? Amen. I don't know who you are, where you are. But if you don't know Jesus today, I'm trying to give you the way out of your dilemma. Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but, but by me. And so if you don't know him today, today is a beautiful day to get saved. Amen. Today is a beautiful day to give your life to somebody who cares for your soul. Your life doesn't have to be over. You don't have to keep suffering. All you have to do is come to Jesus. I know it works. I know it works. All of us who are saved know it works. Amen. Because you know how you were before salvation. The things I used to do. Thank you, Lord. Some people say, I don't do them no more. Praise God. Right. Amen. But sometimes we try. Yeah. Come on, just be honest. Yeah. But it, don't, it, it ain't the same. No. It's not the same when you got the Holy Spirit living inside of you. Mm-hmm. It's not the same. You, you get convicted of some stuff. Mm-hmm. You want to fix it. God gives you a desire, a desire to want to do it the right way. Yes. You don't always get it right, but you have a desire to. And as long as you have that desire, God is going to get you there. Because it starts with a desire to do right. And as long as you keep that desire burning, God is going to help you to maneuver to that place you need to be so that you can live your best life. And listen, people, you deserve it. You deserve to live your best life. Okay? All right, let let us pray. Father, we thank you for every person here. We thank you for teaching us about dilemmas. We know that sometimes we do get stuck. We get stuck in circumstances and we never move from them. We invite you into our dilemmas. If we go back, we've messed up. If we move forward, we're still walking into a mess. And so Lord, we're asking you right now in the mighty name of your son to help us to wait on the Lord. Sometimes it's just a waiting game. And let us not grow weary in well-doing while we wait. And let us not grow weak in trusting you. We trust you even when we can't trace you. We ask that you would have your way in our lives, God. Because we know that if you have your way, we'll always end up in a better situation. Thank you for being so faithful to us even when we've been unfaithful. We love you and we thank you for showing us that life's not over. Life is just really beginning. Mm -hmm. 
Have your way in all of our lives. And we will be careful to give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise God. We'll stop that. Thank you.